Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of CWK Live every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm your host, Dan Zara, thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Well, it's great to see all of you here on the podcast tonight, the live stream, wherever you're watching, whether that is on Facebook with us, later on our YouTube channel, or if you're just listening on our podcast feed, it is great to see all of you. My name is Dan Zara. I'm your host for Coffee with Kenobi and CWK Live. Let's bring in all of our friends. Mary is here. Happy CWK Tuesday, Mary. Thank you so much. It is not and or Eve, but it is Willow Eve, I guess. So, hey, why not? Good to see you, Mary. As always, Mita is here. This is the way. It's CWK Day. Mita has a new Facebook profile picture I see showing it casing Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. Hopefully you got a chance to listen to our review of that on CWK Pro over the last week. Hello, Blake. Good to see you, buddy. What's up? Daniel's here. Hello, Daniel. And Jason is here, too. Hello, Jason. How are you, buddy? Happy Tuesday to you, Ben. Nice to see you. And Tyler's here. Tyler, great to see you. Seeing Tyler reminds me. I don't have the official logo yet because we're still working on that, but January 7th, that is the first Saturday of the new year, January 7th, we have Steam into Star Wars at the school where I teach, and my good friend Tom Gross is a librarian. It's a massive, massive event with a lot of stuff for the local community. There will be podcasts there. I'll be podcasting live. Uh, the Hyperion Hub will be there. Uh, Greg McLaughlin and the Rebel Base Card will be there. Uh, I believe Ross Holliban is going to be there. A lot of people are going to be there. So if you're in the central Illinois area, January 7th, it's almost like a, a mini uh, unofficial Star Wars celebration. It's great fun. So if you're in that area, please come out and join us. I think it's from uh, 10 to noon. I don't know. I, maybe I should find out my information. But it is January 7th. I'll have more information for you next week. But it's definitely January 7th. Tyler says he'll be sure to be there. Well, that's great. It'll be great to see you, Tyler. All right, let's talk about what's going on tonight. Tonight we have uh, top five moments from Tales of the Jedi: Life and Death. As promised, we're going to start exploring life and death. That we didn't get to talk about it very much because Andor, rightfully so, really kind of took control, which we understand. Um, so there's that, and then we're going to talk all about the brand new Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny trailer. I've got a guest that is going to join us for that as well. So in the meantime, let's take a look at what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. All right, so my phone is doing that thing. So let me show you my shirt for tonight. Da, 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 da. It is the Lego, Lego, it is the Christmas Yoda shirt. This camera thing is crazy. Uh, let me fix that. I'm going to disconnect that. It's not working. We're going to have to fine tune that. But yeah, that is the... The official shirt for tonight's show. It is the Ralph McQuarrie Yoda Design Christmas. I also have the action figure. It's massive. Massive. It's a replica of the Kenner one. I think you may have saw it a few weeks ago when I showed, I gave a tour of the Christmas stuff here. But Gentle Giant made it in 2013. And it's got, it's the same Yoda, but it's got the, the Santa decoration. So it's pretty fun. All right. Uh, Daniel says Yoda looks good on you. Well, thank you, buddy. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, let's look at the merchandise uh, that's been announced this week. On Bring Home the Galaxy, it's the second to last week of Bring Home the Galaxy. Yes, uh, look at the size of that thing, right? That's a giant Yoda. Okay, I was one of the websites that was able to review this officially for the first time. But the Vintage Collection Indoor Bunker. The bunker is pretty cool. Comes with an exclusive scout trooper. I still want to call them biker scouts, but they're scout troopers. Here's a look at the scout trooper, the indoor uh, rebel commando. Pretty cool, right? In the disguise. Uh, really great look. Uh, very much reminds me of the one that people thought was Commander Rex. I don't think that it is, but still a great figure. And this is the only way you can get that figure. So really cool. Those will go on sale tomorrow. 
I believe at noon, one o'clock central time, or one o'clock eastern time, noon central time. You can also get the ATST from Return of the Jedi. It comes with an exclusive Chewbacca action figure, which is really awesome. Uh, let's take a look at the next thing. Uh, Means it says, "Sweet, I know." There's some the vintage collection is always really nice quality stuff. So right here you have got this is uh, obviously. Boba Fett. This is a Boba Fett inspired messenger bag from Harvey's. Uh, the link to that is on Coffee with Kenobi's website, by the way. And of course, all these things are on StarWars.com. This is what I'm really excited about. This is from Abrams Books. This is Return of the Jedi Classic Collector's Board Book. I think it's only $17.99. But it's got that great classic art from the Marvel Comics series. But I really like the art there, so I wanted to be sure to showcase that for you. And then we have a number of different greeting cards. Uh, this is from Love Pop. This is a Star Wars-inspired holiday card, naturally, with our buddy Grogu with his little Mandalorian stocking right there. Uh, Blake says, I hope the ATSD can stand up well on its own. I, the last one I made, and it constantly falls over, LOL. Oh, you know what? I agree. I wonder if it like has a thing where you can push the back and the the legs move like in the classic Kenner one. So I'm not sure about that, but that would be nice. Or if it has like a little clear stand you can put it in. That would be useful too, but I'm not sure. Hasbro seems to really be on top of things these days, so hopefully they figured it out. Tower says that retro Return of the Jedi artwork is so cool. Thank you, as is your profile picture. That must be from Galaxy's Edge. Minta says the cards are so adorable. Minta, I thought you would love them. It is pretty cute. A little pop-up, too. All right, this one I think is amazing. This is... It's a Vera Bradley uh, blanket, but it looks extremely soft and comfy and cozy. It's got that great Darth Vader. Of course, that image there is great with the red Sith lightsaber in the background. But there are a number of options uh, from this company. Uh, I believe it's Vera Bradley. I, I, don't, I better double check. I better check my work just to make sure. Yeah, Vera Bradley. It is, in fact, that. Yeah, there's also a small backpack of Darth Vader and a round cross body. And then a large travel duffel bag. All with the same kind of uh, pattern. Pretty neat. Tyler says, that's going to be a lot of credits. I think it's $90 for that blanket. Mary says, those blankets are so soft, I haven't purchased one, but I look at them every time I go into our local Hallmark store. Oh, so that's where they have them. That, I'd be nervous about washing those, but I'm sure there's a trick to it. All right, so here are some earrings. These, of course, these are earrings. These are earrings that are, these that are inspired, of course, by, this is from Rock Love Jewelry. These are inspired by the Inquisitor's lightsaber blade. Uh, these are, yeah, Inquisitor lightsaber earrings, which are really cool looking. Uh, I do have one of my ears pierced, although it hasn't been pierced since probably early college. But I'm almost tempted to re-pierce it just to put that in there. It's kind of cool. And then they've got an Ahsoka Tano and a Darth Maul Kyber Crystal necklace. Those are pretty sweet as well. Those are about $150. There's also a Leia Organa Kyber Crystal one and a Dark Saber one as well. So those are really beautiful. Nice kind of a more of an upper tier way to show off your, your Star Wars-ness through the lens of jewelry. Dan, as Howard says, Dan can rock the Elton John earring look. <laughs> there you go. That's all right. That's exactly right. I'll just try that just for you, Tyler. That's funny. All right. Well, so next on the list, and I told him to join me at 715, um, but one of our friends is going to join me. We're going to talk about the Indiana Jones trailer. Uh, Mita says, the Rock Love Collection isn't cheap, but they look amazing. Yeah, I've never, I've never had anything sent to me uh, from Rock Love. I know they make a lot of nice stuff. Uh, ben says, I got my wife a Rock Love necklace at New York Comic Con LA one, and she loves it. Nice. Is, what does it look like? Is it just kind of the uh, the replica, the one she wears at the end of the original Star Wars? That's the one I keep seeing online. 
I mean, that one is pretty nice. Uh, I really wanted to. This is not really much of a transition. Um, I want to show you a, a lot of cool things, but I also want to remind you, I actually heard from MEI last week about our little trip, um, the Star Cruiser trip. Of course, we're taking June 12th to the 14th next year. Uh, I'm going to go back and check that message because I did get a total of some things. Uh, let's see. We've got we've got almost 25 people signed up for our trip. That's amazing. Like think about how many people that's going to be. We're all going to get to experience the Galactic Star Cruiser together. We're all get to uh, tour to Bat Two together. So we'll get our picture together in front of the Millennium Falcon as a group. Explore, try to save the galaxy, unless you choose to align with the Resistance, or you can choose the path of the Jedi as well. There's a lot of stuff we're going to talk about before we get on this trip to get everybody excited but it's really going to be a wonderful really unique event i'm bringing mason along with me it's actually his birthday then and then Corey and tom are going to join us there as well so it's going to be a lot of fun if you are still considering joining us you can always get a no cost no obligation quote to at least get yourself a room there which would be amazing you just go to coffee with kenobi.com slash mouse fan travel that's coffee with Kenobi.com slash mouse fan travel. And that is how you can join us on the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser again, June 12th to the 14th. There are still spots available, but it uh, continues to sell out, not sell out, but it continues to sell out cabins uh, all the time. It'll be a dream to go on the Star Cruiser with you guys when I'm going on a Disney Cruise at the end of September. Well, you know what? That's pretty great too, Tyler. I think you're going to have an amazing time doing that. For sure. All right. Well, let is let's open this up. Uh, oh, Ben says it's this one. It won't let me click it on here. But uh, if you are in the chat, you can click on Ben's link, and he will show you that necklace that he got for his wife at New York Comic Con, which is pretty neat. All right. Let's see if our guest is ready to join us yet. Well, it looks like he is. Well, well, well. Isn't this interesting? Let's bring him in. Hey, it Hello. lined up really well. Hello, Corey Club. Hello. Excited so to, to be here. Glad yeah, to, uh, like, I like you. your hat. Is this, is this a new hat? I didn't know you had a fedora. I've uh, got one, yeah. We uh, actually went as Indiana Jones for Halloween this year. Oh, that's right. How did I not see a picture of this? I thought I sent you one. Uh, I don't think so. It would have been on. It would have been on my fridge all this time if that I, were I was going to say, I thought you made, had a tattoo of me or something like that. By well, now, yes. Uh uh, Mary says hello, Corey, as does hello. Mita and Blake. It's good to yes. see you, man. How perfect that you wore that. I should I should have thought about that. Well, <laughs> let's talk about this. So the trailer dropped for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and uh, right away um, Clayton texts me and he says Dial of Destiny, and I said mm. what What is that? I thought it was like a, a the title of a Willow episode. I didn't know. <laughs> And oh, then, Corey, yeah. your, you texted me and you said, yeah. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And then shortly after that, you texted me and you said, hey, if you talk about it on the show, I want to come on. I'm like, well, great, because we're going to talk about it on the live show. Um, uh, Tyler says uh, that he loves the hat. Yes. And Jason thank says you. hello, too. Yes, thank you. Uh, so Daniel, of course, says hello. And then hello there. Uh, Blake says, show us some sweet whip moves. Oh, uh -oh. I don't want to whip. Don't don't whip or nay nay, okay? Let's not encourage nope. him. Let's not encourage him. <laughs> All right, so so tell me your instant reactions um, to the title first. Sure, yeah, I know that uh, it's really interesting because everybody gets excited about the title. Uh, what's it mean? What's the you know the adventure going to be like? And it's always tied into if you think about all their films, it's you know some adventure, some something exotic, something foreign, something crazy. Um, and it's always tied into the fact that, he, you know, who knows what it is? There are mysteries around this. And so I don't know if it grew on me right away. Like hearing that dial of destiny, like you said, it didn't seem uh, as like catchphrasy. Uh, it didn't seem as there's much peril necessarily involved. So um, I wasn't really excited about it. But the more I got to think about it, the more I thought about Harrison Ford and Obviously, this being his latest Indiana Jones film, possibly his last. Um, and the fact that, like, maybe this is his destiny in the sense of just, you know, he 
And it feels right, you know? I got thinking about all the novels that have come out over the years. If you think about the old 90s novels, you got a lot of like interesting names. There's like something using a unicorn and the, uh, the there's something about a fleece and there's comic book titles that are just really unique and different. Indiana Jones and, and the fuzzy gumball. Like there's all Yeah, kinds. there's all kinds of stuff. So it's like, it felt like it fits. Like it, if you lined all those up and threw Dial of Destiny right in the middle somewhere randomly, it fits and it works. And I think uh, it's really exciting to see that. I mean, it's after all these years of not getting something, um, it's not the Crystal Scroll. So that's good good enough for me. Oh, well, we'll have to revisit <laughs> that sometime. Um <laughs> So I yeah I'm still getting used to it I I like um, I mean I guess they're telling us what the MacGuffin is they always do in these things uh, mm. I like I love the Indiana Jones movies obviously so I I'm still not sold on the title but I don't have to be I know I'm gonna love the movie sure. I know it's gonna be wonderful Let's talk about the trailer itself and people uh, who are watching along on the show yeah. CWK Live Matthew is here Matthew says uh, hello Dan and Corey. Uh, Andrews uh, is here. Hello, Andrew. And he likes the alliteration. Well, obviously, that is mm. great for sure. And coffee with yeah. Kenobi. We love alliteration. We do. Um, what do you think of the trailer, dude? Wow. I I haven't got this excited about a trailer for a long time. I think back to Force Awakens uh, when it came out around the December era time frame uh, when it first hit. And there was that same nostalgia feel pulling in, the same kind of um, excitement, the the classic uh, uh, undertones of the melodies of the uh, um, Indiana Jones theme. And just the fact that like, it, it just felt so great. I felt like I was like diving back into um, a great memory or um, just falling back in love with it all over again. And that's like, it felt so good. Uh, I think a lot of people are, are harping on Hollywood for saying, Oh, there's no more new ideas necessarily, but I think the idea right now is tapping into nostalgia, tapping into what we love the most. And this exactly did that all the way home for me. Yeah. I mean, I wanted, I wanted more new Indiana Jones forever. So when, when did mm-hmm. Chris Skull come out? 2005, I think. I think that's right. Either 2005, 2005. Or 2006. Wow. Yeah. It's been a long time. Probably okay. 2006. Yeah. Now that I think about it, it was the same year as Iron Man. And I love that one. Okay. I, I think the great thing about this, and this is pretty much a very similar uh, to the trailer I saw at the D23 Expo okay, uh, early, a few months ago. Uh, it's got a lot of the great beats. Hearing Sala and seeing them together. Yeah. I mean, I, I had wonderful goosebumps watching this thing. Uh, I thought it was tremendous. I almost, I got a little choked up, honestly, because it's it's Harrison Ford in the hat uh, in the outfit, and I and he's just he's just the best. He's absolutely the best. Um, ben says 2008. Um, ben, you're probably right. Yeah, uh, he's probably trust right. Me when it comes to numbers, <laughs> uh, but it it just it hit all the right beats, and um, he just looks tremendous. Um, we could certainly give a yeah. top five for the trailer, although I didn't prepare anything for that, so I couldn't do that maybe right now. I, I can do my best. What's that? Maybe can I can do my best, but maybe that's a pull yeah. over. Now, how many times have you watched it? I've watched it twice. And that was some discussion we had, Dan. Uh, I think we had a text thread going uh, with Jeff McGee and the fact that, like, you know, do we watch these trailers? Do we kind of analyze? I know that, that, that a lot of folks out there who run uh, programs that, like, want to analyze each key frame and, and try to figure out what the, what's going on and how to try to find mysteries and Easter eggs. And, um, you know, we were in debating just even just watching it in general. I know that Jeff himself is going to wait till he goes to theaters and the experience is there, which is, I think is a great thing to do. Um, but it, I don't want to watch it too much because I feel like I'll start forming ideas in my head and thinking, oh, this might happen or that might take place or who is this person? I didn't see it last time. And I want to be surprised. I want to go in with a real adventure and be able to enjoy it. I agree. I've only seen it once. I saw it, well, twice if you count when I saw the D23 Expo. But I don't, I don't want, I don't frame by frame anything in Easter eggs. And I just leave that to discussion later. One thing you sure. will never see me do, and I talked about this on Pearl Over before, is you will never see me do a reaction video. I tried. I've to seen do, you do one. I did one, and <laughs> that was it. I think it was for the Row One trailer. And I, for me, mm-hmm. and I know for some people this is an art form, and they've and they've done very well with that. And, and God bless them. But I felt yeah. like a big disingenuous dope because I had the I like the phone in my face, and I'm I'm yeah. watching the show, and I'm and you I'm feel like you need like, to react. 
Yeah, and like I know, like I can act and be a ham, but on purpose. I can't like fake mm -hmm. be excited or sad or whatever. I just, I just right. can't do that. That's just not me. So I'm not gonna sit there and go. Because I just can't, I just can't do that. For me, it would be disingenuous. Other people can do it, and they can rock it, but I, I can't do that. Yeah, I mean that's the thing too about this trailer. I mean, it, it has all the beats of Indiana Jones. It felt Indiana Jones. It had the great. There's some. I, I mean, I can just throw out the bat. There's some great shots that are gonna be iconic that kind of call back to their films. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't get a whole lot. It, it's a really well done trailer in itself. We get some chase scenes. We get some indie cracking whips. If you're talking about cracking whips, um, and just like I said, Harrison Ford just shines, and it just absolutely shines. And it's almost like he hasn't missed a beat in, in no. picking up the hat and, and put on the jacket. And it's just at his age, you think, oh, he's slowed down or he's taking, you know, a back seat to another character. No, he is front forward and forward. And I love the fact that you is transported into history. You know, it's uh, it's like it's the like 60s or something like that. And there's, you know, it, it feels very much you know, like you're basically there. And be able, be able to be a part of that action in that that time and in that place. You know, I'm glad you said that because to me, uh, you know, how could you not be a little bit aware of the fact that Spielberg wasn't? I mean, he and George Lucas are executive producing, which no. is wonderful, absolutely no. wonderful. It'll be interesting to see how much uh, input they had or what have you. But it looks like James Mangold uh, has very much kept the tone and the the atmospheric quality. And the joy and the excitement of these films. And again, it's just a small little trailer. It's under two minutes long, but we've seen a lot of great stuff. Uh, Matthew says he loves the trailer. Haven't been this excited for a movie in a while. Yep. And love he wants it. me to do a reaction video of the Transformers trailer. Well, that's definitely not going to happen. <laughs> uh, but I like the idea. Uh, Tyler says my wife has tried to do reaction videos of me to things. I'm pretty bland. I know. I hear you. The most the most thing that happens is I drop a few not so family friendly words, which is funny. <laughs> so when I did that Target Rogue One commercial back in 2016. Uh, they they before anybody saw it, uh, me and the others in the cast got to watch it, and they had me video myself. And the whole time I was just watching it like this. And at the end, I just looked at right. the camera and I went, "Wow!" Because that's all I, I was just kind of speechless. And right. I mailed it. I sent it to them, and I'm sure Target was like, "Okay, yeah. you know that that <laughs> was it. That was your big reaction video." Yeah, anyway. well, that seems to be the case too. You, you notice that the actors watch themselves in, in trailers and they get yeah. the reaction quality. Uh, most notably, I think it was uh, John Boyega who freaked out over his spot, which I would too in that moment, they, uh, that, seeing it yeah. live. That's a little bit different. But uh, if I saw myself yeah, in think... Stormtrooper armor on Jack, who I'd probably lose my mind. <laughs> Absolutely, and it's just like that's the way I think everyone wants to see instant reaction or instant. Uh, thoughts on you know what they think on that it's i think they like said more power to them to the f folks that are out doing it doing it well and having fun with it that's the thing too is if you want to do it have fun with it i mean make yes. it a party make it a, make it part of uh uh your thing and I'm, i think that's cool to see they're much more talented than i am uh but talent right. wise you know this movie um you get to see glimpses of a lot of characters uh mm -hmm. you don't you can't really tell what's going on you don't even really know much about the plot but uh, Tyler brought up earlier the CGI. In fact, I'll just pop this thing up. It's this trailer looks like fun. Oh, yeah. I feel like they overuse the CGI, get the Harrison as old. But when I think of any, I think of practical effects. Still looking forward mm. to it will be their opening night. Well, you know what? Um, when I saw that the first time and they DH him, it looked so beautiful. And I, I, I mean, I feel like we kind of got a little cheated out of not more young Harrison Ford Indiana Jones movies. I mean, considering Raiders of the Lost Ark came out in – uh, 1981 81, that's a yeah. long time for only four movies so i'm i'm more than good with it uh i i don't i mean i think of practical too i'm sure they use a lot of practical but some of the cgi is just going to be natural because that's where we are right. uh, in film now but i'm sure they're they're good enough to or smart enough to balance it out uh ben says that john boyega video is one of the most spe spe special reaction videos ever wasn't with his dad too. That made it even better. I think you're oh, right. Oh yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, his friends and, and his dad. He was like a whole bunch of people in that, that and video. Dennis yeah. is here. Hello, Dennis. What's up? He says, Great Dennis. hat, Corey. By the way, Dennis, um, uh, his podcast, Podcast Stardust, he does with Jay Krebs, is, is about to day or air their five hundredth episode. Wow. So nice job, Dennis. Well done to you and Jay. Congratulations to you. I I don't really know what else to say about the Nan Jones really unless we did a top five. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can do that well, later. Well, you, you mentioned the CGI. What's that? 
Um, you mentioned the CGI. Uh, yeah. I wanted to speak to that real quick. I didn't know that scene was CGI. Uh, my first viewing. Really? That's I, good. I saw it and I thought, oh, this is must be from um, the Temple of Doom or what I was thinking. Oh, Last Crusade. I was like, this must be, it looks like he's in that Last Crusade uniform as he's, you know, I thought, oh, the, I didn't remember that scene. Was, I thought, oh, they're really using old footage or something. And then I happened to see somebody said, uh, <laughs> I saw the comment there. That was hilarious. Uh, the uh, the comment that was, uh, it was actually CGI uh, of Harrison Ford. So I'm looking forward to technology. And what's what's Lucasfilm and not technology, right? Hello. They, right. Are, they are leaders in building in fantastic ways of tricking us. And I would be surprised and, they peel back the the the, the vent lens and see the fact that like they use a lot of CGI. You don't even know it was CGI, right? And so I think that they're using the best technology possible uh, to achieve a great story. Yeah, this is the this is the cream of the crop. Uh, Den- yeah. Dennis has said Adventure has a new name and is Tennessee Club, which sounds way better than Illinois Zare, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> way better. That's right. Tennessee. There you Club. go. I like that. I like it. Well, hey man, uh, thanks for swinging in and swinging in. And yeah. uh, and sharing your thoughts uh, on the Indiana Jones trailer, I undoubtedly will be talking a lot more Indiana Jones as we get closer to June thirtieth next year. A new Indiana Jones movie starring Harrison mm-hmm. Ford, and, and he's already said this is the last one. I'm not falling down anymore for you people, and I and I don't blame him. He's given us more than enough. Well, Corey, thanks, buddy. Where can people reach out to you to say hello? Yeah, check me out. If you guys listen to Facebook right now, I'm on uh, the Facebook group there. To reach out, out to me there, or uh, you can check me out on Twitter at Corey Club. There, I post every once in a while. Um, and let me know what you think of the trailer. What are your thoughts on Neo Jones and a Dial of Destiny? So, yeah, very cool. All right, hey, thanks, man. We'll see you soon. Absolutely, thank you. Love it. All right, so now we're on your top five moments from Tales of the Jedi Life and Death. This episode, I'm, I'm so glad we're finally talking about this. So glad. I mean, these this series, I, I couldn't let it go. I didn't want it to fall under the radar because it kind of has to a degree. Because, again, the, 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 the wonder and the mastery that is Andor. But we can't leave Tales of the Jedi out there all by itself. Because there's a lot of wonderful storytelling that we need to discuss. So let's do that. Let's give our top five most from Tales of the Jedi Life and Death, an absolutely beautiful episode. I don't know that I could, where I would rank this one uh, at all of them. In fact, I, I need to think about that as we kind of as we go through all of these. Maybe um, at some point we will do that, rank them in order, perhaps. But not not an easy thing to do. Not an easy thing to do because there's just a lot of wonderful storytelling here. So let's do it. What let's talk about what we think about. Tales of the Jedi: Life and Death. This is, of course, the episode where we learn all about. The birth of Ahsoka Tano. Number five for me. Look, I know that they're not actually called Loth Dogs. I know that they're Tukas. But you know what? They look like a, a dog version of a Loth cat to me. So I'm just ignoring the official name or whatever the name is. I thought those little Loth Dog thingies were absolutely adorable. I loved them. It was light. I promise you the rest of my list has a lot more gravitas to it. But those things were so awesome, I couldn't help myself. But rank them as my number five, quite honestly. Number uh, five for me, too. It was great to see where Ahsoka was born, despite that it was in a galaxy far away. It was simplistic in its own way. Yeah, I agree. And, and there was something really lovely about that. Ben said, a bit, I've been waiting for Tales of Jedi discussion since it aired. I haven't watched Andor yet. Wow. Uh, but Tales of Jedi was a night one binge watch with my wife, and rightfully so, because it is so good. So, so good. Number five for Daniels, loth cats and kittens everywhere in the village. Weren't they fun? Number five for Blake is being able to see the faces of Ahsoka's family. I bet for people that love that character, that was a special moment. It was. It was. And Ahsoka's easily top three characters for me, so that was great. Mary's number five is Pav T and Ahsoka walking through the village on their way to the hunt. Stopping to speak with a village elder. I can't remember her name. Uh, I have it later. Gothica or something like that. I'll, I'll it's it's later in my list. So we'll get back to it, but I know exactly what you mean, Mary. Couldn't agree more. Number five for Ben is a beautiful artwork. Starting on the night sky, the mountains with the fog. 
the forest and the flowers, the imagery was truly stunning. Absolutely. Number five for Jason. The beautiful scenery of Ahsoka's home planet. Definitely a planet I'd want to visit on a tour of the Star Wars galaxy. Yes. 100%. A really lovely planet. And that would be fun. Maybe that would be a future destination for the Star Cruiser. That'd be great. Tyler's five. The Village Elder. I feel like there's a lot of history with this character. I'll be interested to see more of her in the culture surrounding her. I would see, watch a whole series based on this woman. The Village Elder is just so cool. Andrew's first one is them finding out Ahsoka was a Jedi. Wasn't that so cool? It was great. Andrew, also uh, good to have you on the show too, by the way. I don't remember if I said that, but definitely nice to have you here, my friend. All right, so I don't know if anyone else is going to post their five. I know there are quite a few of you watching tonight, which is great. So if you want to pop in with your number five, please feel free to do show, and I will share it uh, a little bit later. But I will move on to number four. Number four, I put simply birth. Seeing just the, the opening few moments of the announcement that a child was born, hearing the cries of the child Ahsoka, you know, being a dad myself, a lot of your parents who are listening to this or have nieces or nephews or just friends who've had babies, you know there's just nothing more magical than the uh, the, the cry of a child and their laugh, the sounds they make. And, and because it's such a beloved character like Ahsoka Tano, it's just wonderful. And it just there's just something really special that I felt like it sounds corny, but I'm okay with it. It felt like an honor and a privilege to be able to see the birth of Ahsoka Tano. And I, you know, I never knew I'd say that about a fictional character, but it really was true. And I'm, I guess, you know, I'm not ashamed of that. I just thought it was magical. Number four for Mary, all the animals in the village and in the forest. Yes, I'm going to come back to that. You, Mary, you and I are on the, very much on the same page uh, for this show, for sure. Tyler's number four is Ahsoka calming the lion. Such a tense moment, but the music in Ahsoka's design reel it back in to make a pretty beautiful moment. I agree with you, Tyler. A really lovely moment, for sure. The animation on this one's so good. Minta's number four, Loth Dogs. Can we please see, see them in live action form? They're so cute. I love them. I love them. I think they're great. I want to see them in Galaxy's Edge. Number four for Jason, the, the sense of spirituality and the ritual in the Togruten culture. Very well said, Jason. I couldn't agree more. Dennis says, I don't have moments ranked, but I love the symmetry of baby Ahsoka calming an angry saber-toothed tiger and Grogu calming a raging rancor in the Book of Boba Fett. That's right. They both got that connection to the Force, that, and that's one of the ways they manifest it. Good, com good connection. I didn't even think about that. Number four for Daniel, the mom. So intimate to see her. And Ahsoka and how she looked similar but different. Yeah, right? Isn't that neat? Similar but different. Ben's number four, the village elder, and her focus on spirituality and prayer, which I think is absolutely lovely. Four, Blake says, I'll say her birth also. If you think about it, it's the start of an adventure we've been on with her for years now. It's almost like a twin sons moment. I agree. Matthew's five was the community and the connection to nature. Yes, Matthew, I'm, I'm going to say something similar pretty soon myself. Anders is a saber tooth taking her back to the village. was so cool. And, of course, we know nothing's going to happen to Ahsoka, but there's still, you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, but it's really, really good. Oh, let's see. Uh, Corey says he's got something for us. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to ask if he wants to come back on the show. How about that? Live texting on the show. That's that's exactly why you came to CWK Live, right? Uh, Matthew's four is the town elder. It was so cool and effective. I agree with that. I love the town elder. We're going to get... The town elder is on my list, and I wrote down her name. But I, I swear it's like Gothic or, or that sounds like a Godzilla creature, actually. Uh, but we're going to get to that if someone else doesn't have it before then. There we go, number three. Pavti, who is Ahsoka's mother, voiced by Janina Gavankar, by the way. Um, Pavti and Ahsoka connect with nature. What I mean by that is when she takes Ahsoka out, and Ahsoka is a year old, and they go on a hunt. And it's really 
there, there's just a lot of moments of like these animals in the forest and they're clearly not from earth or like they're real but they're they're obviously inspired by real animals that you'd find on earth in like a little forest or or somewhere in nature and there's just something so beautiful and it didn't feel gimmicky or cheap it felt like like you understand the force you know the force is an energy field created by all living things it surrounds us penetrates us binds the galaxy together and that is on full display here episode written by dave filoni and you can tell you can absolutely tell and there's just there's just a lot of richness and spirituality in this connective tissue. I know Ben mentioned it earlier too, but I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, let's see what other people have. Uh, number three for Minta is the birth of Ahsoka being an aunt of four nephews. It's a magical moment in the episode. See, there you go. I love that. Tyler three Ahsoka's dad. His reaction to his daughter being born brings his big smile to my face. Such a wholesome guy. He's great, isn't he? We don't get very much of him, but he is awesome. Mary's number three is the Togruta village. The villagers and the forest surrounding it. The animation was wonderful. Yes, it was. I totally agree with you. And Tyson is here. Hello, Tyson. Welcome to the show, buddy. Tyson gets a clap because he's one of my students in mythology right now. He's watching The Mandalorian with me. So it's great to see you, Tyson. Thanks for joining me. Tyson said, it's cool to see Ahsoka's connection to animals in the episode, as well as the owl and rebels. Oh, there you go. I don't remember seeing that owl, but is there an owl there? There, there must be. There must be. Uh, trivia question: What is what are the what is the owl called uh, from Star Wars Rebels? The name of the creature. Anybody know that? Uh, Dennis says I somehow missed that purple skin Togrutas existed before this episode. I think we all missed that, Dennis. I agree. Uh, Andrew says Ahsoka's birth is his next one. It's a good choice. Jason's number three is Pav T's bravery in standing up to the saber tooth, not only showing her love and protection for Ahsoka, but also showing Ahsoka the importance of protecting others who are vulnerable. That's right. Number three for Matthew is the use of lighting and of shadows and the focus on the eyes, which is a very, a very conscious decision, obviously, especially in animation, but it really does showcase some things. Am I going to answer that trivia question? Number three for Ben. Pav T's lesson to Ahsoka to honor all life. She's an example of that too. When she kills the animal, she softly caresses it to calm it down and then bowing to the beast when it returns with Ahsoka. Yeah, there's a lot of respect there. It's not senseless violence. There's love and respect. It's it's The hunting is only there for survival, right? For food. They're not going to Taco Bell to eat. They have to get their food somewhere. And it's a really powerful spiritual. Blake's three is the animation. It just keeps getting better and better. The lighting in this and the Bad Batch make these environments look almost real. It, it, there's nothing better than Star Wars animation. I just love it. Number three for Daniel. Baby Ahsoka taming the big cat. She obviously has major force connections. If she can perform that at such a young age. Uh, Moira is what Mary is saying, as is Tyson. Uh, yes, I believe that's right. Or Morai. M-O, it's M-O-R-I, I think. Morai is the name. But I'm and you're right about the name of that specific one. I'm trying to think of the name of the creature itself. Gosh, I had to write about it. Oh, it'll come to me. Uh, ben says Ahsoka Taco. Yes, exactly. All right. Morai is M-O-R-I-A. I believe is the spelling of it. What is it? If I, had a, if I wasn't doing a live show and having to think about a bunch of things at the same time, I could probably think of it right away. But let's go to number two. Number two for me is the Saber Tooth Showdown. Look, um, this was really exciting. Again, I knew Ahsoka wasn't going to die because she's Ahsoka Tano. But I didn't know about her mother. And I didn't know what was going to happen. But it was really uh, well choreographed and exciting. I was glad to see that Pav T wasn't like force sensitive or that would be kind of a cliche. I feel like she just fought for the survival of her child. And then when Ahsoka is taken by the Sabretooth, it's really traumatic and upsetting. Obviously, the Force and goodness prevail. But it's a really well-done scene and a nice way to kind of grip you into the action itself. Number two for Minta is, I almost had a heart attack when baby Ahsoka was taken by the Sabretooth. She had no fear and she was able to connect with it and they went back to the village together. Yes, and that was uh, very powerful, I would say. 
Tyler's too was baby Ahsoka, insanely adorable. I loved her curiosity, but also her curiosity, excuse me, I'm so excited I'm talking too fast, but also how you can tell she understands things way beyond her age, and that is true, and that's no surprise. And there were two from Mary as Jedi, Ahsoka as Jedi, the last lines in this episode, too. Jason's two is Pav T teaching Ahsoka the reality of death and how it should not be feared. Very good, and I agree with you. Uh, Matthew's two is the mother teaching Ahsoka about nature and the circle of life. I thought about that as well, the whole circle of life thing. Ben's two, the birth. Everyone in the village woke up for the birth of a child. It showed the importance of community. That is absolutely correct. Blake's next one, The Village. To me, Stars has to have a touch of whimsy to some of its settings, and this nailed that. Almost feel like a feudal J- fantasy, feudal Japan era town. That's well said. That's well said. Number two for Daniel. The ritual and steps of the actual hunt. Every moment was a learning one. And you are right about that, my friend. Number The next one for Andrew is Ahsoka's Curiosity, which is certainly uh, on, on display here, especially as a child, which is pretty neat to see. Dennis Pavti's instructions to Ahsoka on respecting life and facing death it was like Yoda counseling death is a natural part of life. You're right. I, I agree with that. Again, as it's early on, Ahsoka's uh, innate, uh, organic, natural connection to the Force, even as a child, is just really lovely. Which, of course, leads to her survival. So now, let's get to number one. The number one thing, uh, our number one thing for life and death, the first episode in Tales of the Jedi for me, is Gantika. Okay, I was sort of close on the name. Gantika is the wise elder woman who's like the the wise mentor of the village. And she just she's just very poignant. She's always feeding those low dogs. And she's just passing on her wisdom and inspiring Pavti and being sort of a counsel to her and not telling her what to do, but, but helping her naming, uh, calling out that Ahsoka is a Jedi. Just every frame of her was great. She was, I won't say she was my favorite character in the episode, but she's probably one a, she just, she's a scene stealer. And there's, there's just so much power in respecting your elders and the wisdom behind what they share and what they carry on with all their experience and being completely void of, of stereotypes or things like that, but just really focusing on what is and what can be. And I really like that so much. It's really wonderful. Number one for a lot of you, however, is starting to look like a very similar one that a lot of you are going to say. Matthew's number one. A lot of you are going to say it is simply Ahsoka is Jedi. Minta is also Jedi. Ahsoka is Jedi. Uh, Tyler's number one is the music. Kevin Kiner nails it in this episode. I especially love the flutes at the end of the episode. I do too. Jason's number one is Pav T teaching Ahsoka the inherent value of life, even though Ahsoka is only an infant. This lesson becomes a vital part of her identity. It's seen very clearly in the final episodes of The Clone Wars. Also, number one for Mary, Ahsoka calming the cat and then riding on his back as it takes her back to the village. The amazement of the villagers at what they're seeing, which is really cool. It's a great scene. Tyson's uh, number one is very cool. She knew from the start that Ahsoka was force sensitive and concluded that she would become a Jedi. I like that as well, Tyler or Tyson. Sorry, buddy. Um, Number one for Ben. Ahsoka's return. The saber tooth isn't bringing her back. She's bringing herself back. Oh, interesting. Because she used the force by being respectful to life. Uh, Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Again, a lot of these these episodes are very rich for like future discussions, which maybe we'll do deep, deep dives eventually on them. But I'm glad that we're talking about it here and I'm getting all of your perspectives. Because as always, you're teaching me things I hadn't thought about. The one for Blake to hunt. I don't hunt myself, but I have many friends and family that do. To show the respect of nature reflects the way all my friends have for the animals they go after. Well, that's awesome. Andrew couldn't decide a number one all-around great episode. I agree, Andrew. Uh, I really feel like the whole thing is great. Uh, my number three could have easily been my number one. I could have flipped a lot of them around, to be honest. Daniel's number one is the value of life and to face death lessons. Those really ring true in Ahsoka's future life. Yes, they do. Yes, they absolutely do. Let's see. Well, let's uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me to talk about life and death tales of the Jedi, the first episode. So next week, what are we going to talk about? But of course, the second episode from Tales of the Jedi Justice.
next week, Tales of the Jedi Justice. Okay, let's go ahead and ask Dan Z. All right, this is where you can ask me about Star Wars, podcasting, whatever. Um, as you may know, if you listened last week, uh, on the live shows every week, we're going to be looking at Tales of the Jedi as we go through all six episodes. And on the regular call, with Kenobi, we're going to start reviewing Willow. And I can't wait to drop the first episode and talk to you about Willow because, boy, do I love this series. Like, I authentically love it. And we'll talk about that a lot more. Uh, Tower is going to be really... Excited to talk about these Dooku episodes. Dude, shut up on my favorite character list pretty fast after I watch them. I've always loved Dooku, and I'm glad you feel that way, Tyler, because these really are awesome. Dennis says, great discussion, lots of great observations. Thank you, Dennis. I'm glad to see you. Uh, Jason's honorable mentions the opening shot, panning downward, reminded me of the opening of the duel, my favorite Visions episode, and how unbelievably adorable Baby Ahsoka is. I agree with you. Ben wants to know what happened to trivia. You know what, Ben? That's a great question. Honestly, I just forgot. I got caught up in Andor and uh, other things I'm working on for the show, and I just forgot about trivia. But we'll bring tri- – how about we bring trivia back next week? Why don't we do that? Let's do that. Blake, have the Cubs been any big moves this offseason so far? Uh, so they just signed Cody Bellinger to a one-year deal, actually, about an hour before the show started. So that's the only move that they've done so far, Blake. So I'm excited about that. I'm really excited about um, what the Bears are doing, uh, having a good quarterback finally. So we'll see. Hopefully he develops. Ben, any B2 merch coming out soon? There isn't much out there I can find. Well, at at Disney World, when I was there um, early in November, they had a B2 three and three quarter inch action figure. That was neat. Uh, I didn't buy it, but they do have it there, and they've got a couple of things like that. I, I highly suggest going to shopdisney.com and typing in and, or you'll probably see it, whatever B2, uh, B2 EMO or EMO or out there, you will find them. I would think on Shop Disney. And of course, the Black Series casting that went on sale uh, about a month, month and a half ago, that has it too. Dennis wants to know how does Tales of Jedi rank among other Disney Plus series for you, for Star Wars this year for you? This year, huh? I don't know. It's pretty up there. I mean, I love the Bad Batch, but I will put the Tales of the Jedi above that only because it's got characters I know really, really, really well. And I love Ahsoka Tano so much. But that, but I also love the Bad Batch too. So I don't know. It's it's hard to to kind of discern that, isn't it? Because it's just so different. It's just so different from Andor. They're both great uh, for different reasons. And Dennis says, "Go Bears!" Yeah, Dennis and I text during all the Bears games. Always fun to do that. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. This was a bit longer show, but I'm more than okay with that. We got to have Corey on talking about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny talking about that trailer and talking all about tales of the jedi with each and every one of you which is great i want to thank all of you who joined me if you are a long time participant in cwk live or if you're new to the show tonight it was so great to have you love to have you next week and bring your family bring your friends there's plenty of room at the coffee with kenobi table to talk star wars mary have a great week to you Mean to may the force be with you, Jason. Looked up more on the Clone Wars character encyclopedia. The species is a convore. That's right, a convore. I knew it. I knew it was right there. Thank you, Jason. Tell her have a good week uh, to you. So long. Good night. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Matthew, have a magical week. Uh, may the force be with you all. WD Magic Cast is where you want to go for some Disney talk. Blake says, not my fam. Blake, good to see you, buddy. It's good to see all of you. Don't forget, again, to join us later this week as I will review the first couple of episodes of Willow. Looking forward to doing that. If you are considering, even remotely considering joining us on the Galactic Star Cruiser, look, even if you're on the fence, uh, just get a no-cost, no-obligation quote. You you won't lose anything. It won't matter if you decide not to go. Um, but at least you can get your, your space out there. And if you decide you don't want to do it or it's just not the right time for you to do this, I understand, but if you want to, go to coffeewithkenobi.com slash mousefantravel and let them know you want to go on the Galactic Star Cruiser with me June 12th to the 14th of next year. Ben says, great discussion tonight, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Tyson says, Packers on top. I just learned Tyson was a Packers fan a few days ago, so that was an interesting little surprise. Ben's good night. Good to see you. And Matthew, no problem, buddy. 
appreciate all of you so much. I will see you next week for more Star Wars talk. Hope you're having a great Christmas season. And remember, this is a podcast you're looking for. See you next time, everybody. Talk to you later.